We're getting closer and closer to a generation where Madden is the only football game that the young kids will remember playing. And that's terrible. So today, I'm going to talk about the All-Pro Football 2K8 experiment. Once upon a time, there were all these football games that coexisted with each other. NFL Blitz, Tecmo Bowl, NFL Sports Talk Football, Backyard Football, Emmett Smith Football, Kurt Warner's Arena Football Unleashed, and way more. After Y2K failed us all and forgot to end the world, two prominent games stood out from the rest, 2K and Madden. While these two games were competitive with each other, they were also able to have their own games, and people liked both. Each game was good at something that the other game wasn't, and this would go on until NFL 2K5 released. This is heralded as one of the best video games of all time, and it was considerably cheaper than the Madden counterpart that came out in the same year. Now, they'll never admit it, but I'd like to think that this is why EA and Madden signed an exclusivity rights deal with the NFL, this move eliminated competitive pressure from any video game series that used NFL players. When it comes to using NFL players, if EA wasn't behind it, you weren't allowed to make the game, or you'd just get sued into oblivion. NFL 2K had no choice but to stop making NFL games. But no one said they had to stop making football games, huh? In 2005, Visual Concepts was sold by Sega to Take Two Interactive. In 2007, All Pro Football 2K8 was born, and while it's nowhere close to NFL 2K5, it's still pretty good in its own right, especially when you think about what they had to work with. Now, is this game a cash grab to distract us from the fact that NFL 2K5 was backwards compatible? 2K? Money grabs? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Never that. Eh, cash grab or not, let's take a closer look. Since EA had the rights to the NFL, 2K had to think outside of the box. They decided to get the rights of some retired players and have them lead the game instead. So the cover has John Elway, Jerry Rice, and Barry Sanders on it, which is pretty damn cool. Now for the kids that never saw them play or heard of them, I can see why they would be hesitant to buy it just off of the cover. But for those that played with Rice, Elway, and Sanders on Backyard Football on 2K5, we realized that they would be the perfect people to lead the charge for this game. The gameplay was very similar to NFL 2K5. Some parts you could even tell what stuff they basically copy and pasted. But the great thing about that is that NFL 2K5 was such a solid game that nothing really had to be changed that drastically. Instead, the game focused more on these special abilities to separate the abilities of the characters, and not ratings, and I'll get to that later. The passing in this game was great, and I appreciated the little attention to details. I liked how the QB had to load up for a really long throw, or at least take the time to set his feet for a pass if he was out of position. To this day, it's still one of the most realistic passing systems and feels like a small improvement over 2K5, to me at least. Most of 2K8's drawbacks come directly due to the fact that they didn't have the rights, which caused a shallow experience that we were all aware of going in. Yeah, you're able to play a whole season mode with your team and you get to roll through a gauntlet of other teams that you have no attachment to whatsoever. Yay. Now while this is like, uh, it was fine, you weren't able to have a dynasty mode because you couldn't draft new players because the player pool for this game was already so small. You also aren't able to customize as much as you'd want to in these games. While you're able to create a player, you're not able to like max out their ratings to like 99 because there aren't ratings in this game. When we look back to NFL 2K5, you had the Crib, Franchise Mode, ESPN 25th Anniversary, First Person Football, and so much more. Compared side by side to 2K5, All Pro 2K8 looks like a stripped down version of it. Because it However, the premise was so original, it was able to skirt by on that idea and the gameplay alone. Almost every problem with All Pro Football 2K8 can be pointed to the fact that they just don't have the rights. Now for an example, like I mentioned before, All Pro Football 2K8 doesn't even have ratings. Just gold, silver, and bronze level players. Well, however, I understand why they had to do gold, silver, and bronze level players. 
since they didn't have enough Legends rights to fill out a whole football roster, they used this system to keep the game as balanced as they could. So when you were building a team, you only had spots for two gold players and three silver players. These limiters also limited the amount of fun we could have with these creative players. I wish there were different modes that encouraged different roster builds. Like, let's say you were allowed 11 gold players for this challenge or only two for this one, you know? Kind of similar to like my team and Ultimate Team, some challenges that they do there. And there are a lot of gold players in all pro football at 2k8, but you're never going to use them all. In what world are you going to use a gold slot on a center? Come on now! Or like a cornerback. That's not, that's not realistic. These ratings could have been a point system where gold is 5, silver is 3, and bronze is 1. And there weren't real limits, but you had to spend your points wisely. So for example, if gold is 5, and you were given 25 points, then you could spend your points on 5 gold players, or like 7 silver players, and 4 bronze players, you know? It would have been cool to have some kind of system like that in place. It would have been able to promote more team flexibility, and have a little bit more opportunity costs with our roster choices. Also, if you look at some of the other rosters in the game, you can see that they have like four gold players and all of that, and yeah, not cool. So yeah, this game was more for playing with your friends and not getting too invested in your teams, trying out all the old people and just having fun with it. It wasn't NCAA 14 or Madden where you could recruit players or scout players, draft and build a dynasty, but without the rights, that wasn't really an expectation. Like, there weren't going to be more old people to draft. That that wasn't going to happen, ever. All in all, All Pro 2K8 showed us that you could still make a creative and fun football game without rights, and that's all we needed to see. Making a football game without rights is hard, and the challenge is just something that most developers aren't up to task because it's a huge risk for a very moderate reward, if anything. Trying something like this is so much of a risk that the planned sequel didn't even make the cut because Take-Two is busy reshuffling their priorities and turning their focuses more towards other games. Nowadays, Madden competitors pop up on Steam or iOS, and some daring devs even try console competitors, but they don't have the gameplay chops that NFL 2K did, and they probably never will. If anyone had a chance to compete with Madden, it was 2K, but I don't expect to see a response from them soon. But I am glad they tried 2K out. It gave all of us 2K fans something to play, and it was fun enough that we could just go back and just ball out with Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, and more. Thanks 2K8 for giving us a football game for Xbox 360, even when NFL 2K5 was backwards compatible. You didn't have to do it, but you did. You actually really didn't have to do it. The game wasn't deep, but it reminded us that a good football game not named Madden is still possible, y'all. It also reminded us about how having rights to something can change everything. Imagine if NBA Live signed a deal with the NBA. And it's tough to compete when a major competitor has that big of an advantage over you, and it just becomes not worth it. Now before I go, I'm interested in hearing what football game you would try to make without college football or NFL rights. What would you want to see? I have a few ideas, but I'll probably save them for future videos. Hey guys, just wanted to say thank you for a thousand subscribers. Couldn't have done it without you. And I thank you guys for all your support and all your nice comments and stuff. Uh, to celebrate, I might do a Q&A. So if you have any questions, feel free to send them to me on Twitter. And just if I have any other topics that might like feel heartfelt, I'll do it. But I haven't really gotten around to a good idea for it. So... Again, thank you guys so much for everything, and onward and upward, all right? See you guys in the next video.